everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. I almost messed up that intro. <laughs> Joining us this morning is Dennis Zen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. Today, unusually for a Friday, we have lots and lots of news to talk yeah. about, so let's get to it. Also, here is John Roca. Hey, everybody. Uh, glad to come back on. I wore my red tornado shirt today because I think we're going to be whooping up a lot of mess for uh, Star Wars stuff today. Also, your red shirt, guys. Oh, yeah. red shirt. Yeah, I did. Right. Oh, yeah. You're not That's actually that. allowed to wear oh. any other color. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Wow, well, it's happenstance. <laughs> Worked out. There we go. Laundry day. All right. And also, here is Matt Nose. Hi, uh, nice, nice to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I don't know what exactly I have to say. I should have maybe worn some sort of red shirt myself, and we could have been a dynamic duo. Hey, uh, well, we are a dynamic duo. We on the are. Top That's what I'm show. saying. We have uh, something. Yeah, Dennis, I hope you're ready. It's the top ten show on. I know. Exactly. Gotta get Bring it on, baby. I gotta Bring get it on. With you too. Um, um, before we get started, I want to uh, remind everyone we have our Comic Con meetup, which is this for Collider Video, Schmozno and Film HQ. That's going to be this ne or next Thursday at 6 to 9 p.m. We're going to do it at the Fox Sports Grill. We're going to do it out in the patio area. I made a Facebook invite event page. You can check it out on my Twitter, at Think Hero. I pinned it to the top. Check that out. And if you're in Comic-Con, you don't need a badge. You can just show up. Also, uh, today we are having another Schmodown. Matt Nost, uh, you're going to be part of that one. I am taking on Elliot Dewberry tonight. That drops uh, tonight. I can't wait. Today, Dewberry. 2 p.m. Today, 2 p.m. Today, 2 p.m. Mm. Apologize. Apologize. There it is. Look it's at, early. It's early for me. I'm normally still just waking up right now. It's a gorgeous picture. I look blurry as all can be right there. <laughs> it's the flames flying out. It obscured the camera's <laughs> angle. Look at the intensity between the two of us. That's right. Two average white guys are going to square <laughs> off at 2 p.m. Is the internet ready for that kind of heat? I think so. I think they <laughs> you are. You think so? Kaboom. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Dewberry and I, uh, we're going to battle it out. And uh, Dewberry, you're going down, my friend. That's all I can tell you. You are going down. <laughs> all right, let's get to the first topic. All right, Disney has released a new poster and featurette for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. The footage highlights the film's return to practical effects with behind-the-scenes looks at the newest characters populating the Star Wars universe. The clip alternates between finished footage and set video showing director Gareth Edwards and his cast in action. Felicity Jones stars as Jyn Erso with Mads Mikkelsen as her father, Galen Erso, an Oppenheimer-type figure with doomsday knowledge that is sought by the Empire and the Alliance. When Mon Mothma, uh, when Mon Mothma teams Jin with Diego Luna's reliable Captain Cassian Andor, the two unite a team to help them pull off the ultimate heist. Rogue One also stars Alan Tudyk, Riz Ahmed, Donnie Yen, Jang Wen, along with Forrest Whitaker as the Clone Wars character Saw Gerrera, and Ben Mendelsohn as the nefarious director Orson Krennic. Rogue One hits theaters on December 16th. Dennis, what did you think of the new featurette for Rogue One? Well, this wasn't the trailer that we were <laughs> expecting. We <laughs> talked about how the trailer was going to come out, and we're going to do all this stuff about the trailer, instead this featurette came out. Uh, me and Christian actually did a reaction and review of this featurette, which is on the site right now. You can click on that after the show. Um, Perry, who is actually in London right now for Star Wars Celebration, she actually, not only did she get to see this featurette, she got to see the trailer, which oh. they showed it to all the fans there, but they didn't stream it live for us, which right. I think later tonight we'll probably get it. But if you want to check that out, that's on the Collider.com website. And that uh, has some spoilers to what's actually on there. In terms of this actual featurette, I liked it a lot. It's different mm -hmm. than what we saw last year for Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. Comic-Con, there was a featurette for Force Awakens that they, they released. Um, <clears throat> that one had a lot of nostalgia to it. It was like, hey, guys, we're here on you know this Star Wars. I can't believe it. it's the first day. A lot of that. This is a little different. This was a lot of slow motion shots, a lot of action shots, a lot of tracking shots. Mm -hmm. So um, what did you think of this uh, featurette, Roka? Oh, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I get it. I mean, uh, half of me that is the crazy nerd is like, where's the trailer? Mm -hmm. But the other half of me was like, we got three minutes of, oh, sorry, I set my alarm again. We got three minutes of like, uh, of great behind the scenes stuff. Great, we saw the practical effects versus CGI effects. We got to hear from the actors, from the director. We got to hear, we got to see what it looked like. And we got that vibe again of the war. We got that vibe that it's gonna be a darker, grittier Star Wars. And that music really helped to elevate 
elevate it and put you right in the world. And so whatever the stuff people were complaining about, the reshoots or rewritings or whatever, to me, I was back in the camp again, a thousand percent. So excited. And I loved the ferret, op, uh, otter, whatever, possum yeah. thing that was yelling, going, ah, with the, that was just perfect. And so for me, I enjoyed it. It made me happy. It was a little weird to see stormtroopers walking through the water. That was a little weird for me. Like, do they rust? But like, it was, it was a little strange for me to see that. But they're pushing the boundaries of Star Wars, and that's what I've always been a fan of: is exploring, expanding, expanding, expanding on the in the video medium. So I'm I'm happy with it. Matt, uh, I was just so excited. You see it, and internally, I was just like, ee! just the whole time, <laughs> just like, oh, this looks so. I love that they stuck with the practical effects. Still, yeah. you can see all the behind the scenes, and they show all these different characters, and you're like, it looks so real and believable. And do they rust? That was the question. Well, yeah. Yeah. They, said, yeah. they can intergalactically travel faster than the speed of light. I figured they, they, they got stainless steel in their arsenal. Oh, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I like that that was the question you walked away listen, with. Listen, in War of the Worlds, it was water that knocked them dead. 75% a water planet, and they're going to go down to water. Oh, that was science. War of the Worlds was bacteria. Yes. Oh, all right, fine. Like, there's no bacteria on Earth. Anyway, all right. Yeah, but I just... <laughs> Just seeing the, uh, I got, you know, I once I know that I'm going to see a film, I steer clear of the trailers as much as possible. So this I'll make an exception for because I do want to see as many of these as I can, as much as I want to deny myself because I want to hold the anticipation. But it's kind of hard not to. And I'm mean, basically it just looks like you know Seven Samurai in space. They just keep mm -hmm. adding people to this squad, and they're going to go and take on. But like when you see the dish go into the Death Star and just yeah. all these little things, you're like, I can't, I can't wait. I'm still excited. So excited now. It's still months away. This sucks. <laughs> yeah, there's that slow motion shot of yeah. Felicity Jones with what looked to be like a hard drive, <laughs> possibly the plans for for the Death Star. Yeah. Um, there was one quote in there, and I want to hear what you guys have to say about it, where uh, Gareth Edwards said. You you know even though he, Star Wars is his favorite movie he's like you don't want to be too respectful mm -hmm. and what are you bringing new to the table? Do you think that's a little you know uh, response to the criticisms of Force Awakens mm. where you know everyone's like oh it's too much of a retread of a New Hope? Is that something that maybe subconsciously that they're trying to do? Like hey guys this is something totally new. That's certainly a valid point. It's uh, it's certainly possible. I don't know though if Gareth wanted to subtweet and mm -hmm. uh, side eye these people or throw some shade uh, at it because I think he wants to very much have his own version of like his own film. Mm -hmm. And so I think he's trying to separate it and he's trying to make it very clear that this is not uh, a retread of the old of the original trilogy. This is not Force Awakens. This is something else completely. And I think by saying that, he's saying he's a fan of expanding the universe and wanting different voices to be involved in Star Wars and interpret Star Wars. Matt, I I, I agree with his uh, sentiment. Like you need to be respectful of, of the past and of what's come previously. Right. But at the same time, you need to blaze your own trail because otherwise, we're just going to keep rehashing and rehashing the same ideas and stories. Now, for Force Awakens, I get it because you need to take something that's been George Lucas's baby for decades mm -hmm. and basically something that makes something that the public is going to enjoy. So why not cherry pick some of your favorite ideas and then cobble together another story and make a successful product and thereafter you can do whatever you like. So that I'm, I'm more okay with. Whereas this, I, I, I like the idea that they're gonna try and do something different. They're not gonna basically adhere to everything that's that's previously happened, you know? Yeah. Blaze their own trail. And chronologically, it's interesting because this is chronologically the second Star Wars film. It's not the second in the trilogy, right? But it's the second Star Wars film at this particular cycle. Now it's it's a it's a separate story. It's not involved with the with the the new trilogy, but there's an at ad in this second film, just like there's at ads in Empire Strikes Back, which was the second film in that Star Wars cycle. So it's just interesting to me that there are a little bit of similarities. Even by even by happenstance, it's just interesting there are at ads in both of those movies. Shanane is the only person here at the table that was born after the original trilogy came out. <laughs> Dear God. What, Possibly what, what, what the did prequels. you think of this uh, little featurette? I, um, I loved it. I thought it was really cool. And I also like th behind the scenes anything. Like I'm kind of a sucker for just watching people make movies in general, even if it's not even a movie that I'm that excited for. Um, but this looks really cool and very, I think you said believable. And I, I really believed everything that I saw in this featurette. And it kind of felt like a trailer at some yeah. points. So everyone that's complaining that we didn't get a trailer, if like the music, the way that they did this is amazing. And just the featurette itself is shot beautifully. So I wonder what the trailer is going to be like. Yeah, we're yeah. hoping we'll get that trailer later today, tonight. Yeah, for sure. later, later today or tonight, <laughs> and hopefully we can have a reaction or review to that. All right, what's next? 
Things are looking up for Warner Brothers' DC Expanded Universe. Suicide Squad, the follow-up to this year's less-than-stellar Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, was a risky prospect for the studio because of its villain-centric premise featuring a bunch of comic book characters that general audiences know nothing about. But if early box office tracking is to be trusted, Suicide Squad will be just fine. Per a report from THR, early numbers on Suicide Squad forecast an opening as high as $125 million with the potential of climbing even higher. But at this early stage in the tracking game, $125 million appears to be just the starting number. For comparison, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, featuring two of the most iconic comic book characters in history, opened to $166 million. So if Suicide Squad comes even close to that, it will be a major success for the studio. And with Batman v Superman, the end problem was that it had no legs at the box office and quickly slowed down over the ensuing weeks, closing with only $300 and $30 million at the domestic box office. The key here for Suicide Squad will not only be a big opening weekend, but scoring positive word of mouth that ensures repeat business and a lengthy stay at the box office. Roka, do you think Suicide mm. Squad has a chance of opening with more than $125 million the first weekend? I absolutely think it has a chance. I, I've, I've been nothing but excited with every one of these trailers that have come out and the featurettes and the interviews and the stuff that they've done and even the way the actors have reacted in the interviews to the film. I feel nothing but positive positive about this film and I think for all the people who say they're DC haters DC it's people love good comic book movies superhero movies this is giving you a great vibe and you know the DC uh, diehards are going to be their opening weekend to support DC but the rest of us are excited to see it too because the trailers have been great you've got Will Smith you've got an up and coming Margot Robbie who's really establishing her power in the industry and you've got Joel Kinnaman who's great vibe to play off of and all these other great actors I mean good actors and great actors playing the different parts so to me, it's got the right vibe at the right time. And if you're going to follow up Batman vs. Superman with something that's going to bring you back to the DC fold, I think this is the perfect one to do it with because it's an ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. And so it, there's a lot to go around. And, you are, and you're walking in experiencing these characters for the first time probably ever or on screen at least. Matt, what do you think? Is it going to make more than $125 million? Well, it comes down to what Sinead said, word of mouth. Yeah. So if it ends up being good, then it will drive more <clears throat> people to the theater. I'm, from the outside looking in, you assume that Will Smith only signed on because the script was great, yeah. the director had a great vision. All the others you can make a case for, except I guess Leto too, you would need something that would propel those two individuals right. to be like, yes, this is a good idea to do an ensemble movie, uh, especially with characters that nobody knows anything about outside of you know the DC fans themselves. So I think it's so long as it's slightly above average as far as whatever the Rotten Tomato score is, I think it will do well at the box office. Yeah. I, I, that's the only hurdle it needs to clear is somewhere in like the 70%. It does that, then everybody will go see it. Yeah, I think it's going to actually open to a lot more than 125. Mm -hmm. I think maybe even like 140. I think there's several reasons. We have recently the Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition came, right. came out. And, you know, the, the original theatrical version got a lot of mixed reviews on Rotten Tomatoes or all the critics. The, the Ultimate Edition, for me personally, it was a better version. It didn't fix the major problems right. I had with it, but universally or generally, people liked it more than the theatrical version. So it's got that momentum. And then there's three things that, that you were mentioning, like with Suicide Squad, the people in there, the characters, they're not that familiar with mm -hmm. them, except yeah. for you have Joker, yeah. who's one of the most yeah. iconic villains ever, and then yeah, then you, yeah. <laughs> then you have Harley Quinn, who's become super popular since her introduction in the animated series. And then you at least have a cameo of Batman. Yeah. No, people cannot get enough of Batman. Right so enough. I believe that as we get closer, probably <clears throat> maybe around Comic Con, a little after Comic Con, leading up to the move, uh, to the release of Suicide Squad, we're gonna get trailers and commercial spots that are gonna feature heavily yeah. on Joker, Harley Quinn, and Batman, and that's yeah. gonna get people into those seats. Absolutely, and, and the Jared Leto Joker, Looks fantastic yeah. for what they're doing. It's perfect for the world they're creating. And I love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn in that, once again, in the universe they have created. Her outfits aren't the outfits that she would necessarily wear in the comics, but they fit for what they're doing. And they're very powerful. I think all around, the design of the costume, the designs of characters are very powerful and you want to watch them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it comes down. To, I will see it. It's so long as Leto's Joker is good. Yeah, I can take. I can handle all the rest, but that is the crux for me. So if that's good, I'm in. From what and, I've seen so far, I'm like, yeah, yeah but yeah. I'll, I, you know, I'll wait till somebody sees the advanced, like the early so screener great. and all that, and just let me know and yeah. be like, I, yeah, <laughs> it's worth it. Trust me, he's excellent. Be like, fine, I'm in. Okay. I'm 100. All 
All right, guys. Uh, now on to our buy or sell segment. Shanae, what do we got first? Well, while all the buzz at the moment is about Suicide Squad, the third official film in the DC Extended Universe after Man of Steel and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, next year the interconnected universe will get even bigger with Wonder Woman. And thanks to some exclusive first looks from Entertainment Weekly, we have some new images that have landed online. Monster director Patty Jenkins took the helm of the first female-led superhero movie out of the gate, which has been in the works now for years. Wonder Woman opens in theaters on June 2nd, 2017 and also stars Gal Dot, Chris Pine, Connie Nielsen, Robin Wright, David Thewlis, Danny Houston, Elena Anaya, Ewan Bremner, and Saeed Tug Maui. Matt, do you buy or sell the new images of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman? Uh, internet sharpen those knives because I am selling. <laughs> uh, it's 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 more so that I need to see DC succeed outside of Chris Nolan with their iconic characters in a movie. Every time I'm always walking out feeling slightly let down. So when they release these images, I'm, I'm tentative at best as to what I think ultimately is going to be, you know, the movie. So I look, I hope it's good because Wonder Woman's an amazing character. Mm -hmm. This demigoddess from another land. She's basically a, uh, an Amazonian warrior princess. It's a great character and it was fantastic in the comic book. So. Please bring that to life. Please, please bring you know all those years. But the problem, I think, it's just the the character's been around for so long that there's this tremendous pressure to deliver, and I don't know if they will. So I'm going to sell for now. Roka, yeah, I absolutely sell. I'm joining my uh, top ten friend here. Yeah, I don't like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman at all. I saw the Ultimate Edition. I saw the theatrical edition. She doesn't impress me at all. And so for me, these images look like a model doing a photo shoot rather than actual Wonder Woman, and that's what really bothers me. I think Godot is not capable of going levels deep with this character, and this character is levels deep, and this is my own personal opinion about it, you know, and people loved her, and that, no disrespect to that, it's just my personal opinion. I just don't gravitate to this version of Wonder Woman. Uh, it, it doesn't. She's a powerfully complex character. She carries a weight and a burden of being the representative of her island and of her people to planet Earth, and so you need someone that conveys that power, not someone that slinks in and out of things and you know, defers power to Bruce Wayne, as you saw in Batman vs Superman. I want a powerful Wonder Woman. She's been so, such a, a great character through the history of the comics. You want someone that conveys that weight, that gravitas. When you look at her, you feel intimidated. You feel in awe of her. You know, but we don't get that with Gal Gadot. And I just don't think that these images do anything to make me any more excited. And I, I would wish, you know, I would have. I'm still in the camp of Jamie Alexander. I would have loved to have seen Jamie Alexander or even Kate Beckinsale, who's done a great job in her recent film Love and Friendship. That woman can act, and she would be fantastic as Wonder Woman as well. But, you know, we're, we're, we have what we have. These images don't make me that excited, so I sell it. Roka, it's Gal Gadot. Gal, Gal Gadot. Gadot. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Gal Gadot. Um, I'm actually going to buy... Wendig. Yeah. I'm actually going to buy these images, except for the one where she's crossing her arms because it looks really forced. Yeah. They probably made her take like 50 of those photos. Yeah. <laughs> she looks really uncomfortable. When she does it in the actual movie, Batman v Superman, I thought it was really cool. I just mm. think, you know, a lot of these, these photo shoots, because I, I think that one is just a publicity one versus... The other ones are from the actual mm -hmm. film. And so I buy those. I actually liked her in Batman v okay. Superman. I, I felt like most critics, even the ones that didn't like the film, enjoyed her. Obviously, we didn't get to see in-depth performances right. from her just because they didn't really give her character much to do. But what I saw from her, I, I enjoyed. Sinead, what did you think about Wonder Woman in Batman v Superman? And what do you think about these images? Um, I mean, I don't have a problem with her. And I it's not like I even thought about her being part of the issue with the film either. Mm. Um, I will say, I kind of think these images are a little bit like soapy, if you will, mm, yeah. little little cornball, um, especially the one on the left. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't know. It's got a little bit of like a, that, that comic book shine to it. So I, I like it. I like the environment, but I will agree that it is a little bit corny and I always pictured this to be a little bit more gritty and right now i'm seeing a little bit of like a like a comic book soap opera type thingy I, it's too pretty it's, just, it's too it is. safe I mean, it's the, too pretty yeah exactly it's, it's like a fashion fashion yeah. shoe it is I the, the one with the robe looks like you'd see that up at like a coach store and she should just have a bag <laughs> right next to her like right. looking at that what yeah. and what action movie does that that photo exist yeah. i don't know yeah that's yeah. the one that threw me off and i was like no but when her hair just yeah. drapes perfectly with the robe yeah. like how many how many assistants had to come in and right. just you know everything's just carefully placed and do you think yeah. Dennis? do you think and this is something that my own personal idea like do you think that 
people thought she was so good because the movie was not great and she stood out because because everything else was so bad. So she's the no, best I part of the film th that was bad. Like they like the action sequences with her. I mean, obviously, too. You know, Yelling the, in every movement. Uh, I mean, oh. I, you had you had the awesome Hans Zimmer score with no, Zimmer's her. The score one, was great. Yeah, yes. Along with that, I, I think it worked well for what they were actually doing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, performance-wise, we can't we can't tell yet. They, mm -hmm. they just didn't give her enough to do. Okay. All right. All right. What's next? Entertainment Weekly has released new details along with an official first image for the Stephen King adaptation of the popular The Dark Tower series. Idris Elba stars as the gunslinger Roland Deschain, a character described as 200 years old with deep-rooted connections with the supernatural nature of the film. In describing his character, Elba said, When you meet him, he's very much a stoic man, doesn't want to talk. But when you get to know him, he really knows quite a bit about the world and his world's history. Roland is tracking down Walter, played by Matthew McConaughey, a.k.a. The Man in Black, a powerful warlock who's looking to bring down the film's setting mid-world. In the EW issue, director Nicolaj Arcel also revealed that the movie is actually a sequel to the book series, saying, The hardcore fans of the Dark Tower series will know that this is actually a sequel to the books in a way. It has a lot of the same elements, a lot of the same characters, but it is a different journey. The Dark Tower opens February 17th, 2017. Dennis, do you buy or sell the Dark Tower adaptation being a sequel to the book series well since i didn't really read the book and i'm not too familiar with it so it being a sequel anything they add or change from the book isn't going to bother me i like idris elba i like this picture the one thing though that i, I do want to harp on and this kind of goes back to our, our our last story with what you guys were saying with especially the picture when we're doing like this can you bring up that 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 cover the the cover the ew cover for this my God, that's a terrible cover. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Entertainment Weekly consistently has the worst photo shoots for movies. Like, <laughs> did you see like when they did like uh, the Hateful Eight? They just it's yeah. it's super. When you're talking about glossy or whatever, it looks so. They. What is this? Hmm. I, look, what's his pose? What that it, is, is that's a passive royalty for Roka's hair on McConaughey. Yeah, that's right, right that's there. right. That's what that is. Look at that, it's gorgeous. It's a terrible cover. Like, you see like Empire <laughs> Magazine, how cool their covers look. Yeah. And you see Entertainment Weekly's photo shoots and these, these are just. Does nothing for, I mean, does less than nothing you, you for look, you. You take at that dark tower, you look at that, you're oh. like, what is that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't yeah. know what that is. It doesn't, it doesn't give, I mean, I am assuming from this that Matthew McConaughey has some sort of mystical powers. When you say he's a warlock, like this is one of the few Stephen Kings I didn't read just because the books are, yeah. you know, this thick and there's numerous of them. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know about that because I've already read a few King, Stephen Kings like that. And I got to move on. But, you yeah, know, from that picture and the the, the typography, it's just like, I, I don't know. What is he, a wizard? Is yeah, this a Harry yeah. Potter kind of? You can tell by his hair. That's that's like, <laughs> that's you know, he's a warlock because he's got oh, that oh, hair. Oh, oh, there's nothing wrong with his hair. Yeah. Hey, Roka's oh, a warlock. Come hey, on now. Hey, hey, hey. Come on now. You do work at the wand, the wand store or whatever. <laughs> the wand store, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have some wonderful wands uh, here. Yeah. He's at the genius <laughs> bar. That's right. That's right. Uh, Roka, uh, buy, or, buy or sell uh, the, the the image and the and the quotes. Steaming potion for you, yes. Uh, no, uh, I I hate the image. I okay. think it's a terrible Photoshop. Um, he looks like I don't know what he's doing with those guns, but it looks a bit sexual, which is uncomfortable. Um, the it looks like they took a picture of that and then juxtaposed like really bad Photoshop of Idris Elba on top of it. So it doesn't make me excited. Mm -hmm. Now, do I do I buy Idris Elba? Which is the original question as a sequel? Do I buy that they're doing a sequel? I absolutely buy this. I think it's a great idea because you've got you're right, Matt. Those those books cumulative were almost five thousand pages, yeah. and that's a lot to ask of any reader, <laughs> <laughs> for God's sakes. But what's so great about this is you've I think you. You've cast this really, really well. You have Idris Elba, who just brings power and gravitas to any role he's in. And then McConaughey has just really come around to be this amazing actor mm -hmm. that we enjoy watching. And they're great foils for each other yeah. on screen. So it's going to be fun. Because this this Dark Tower series blends so many different genres. <clears throat> you have mystical stuff. You have medieval. You have Old West. You have uh, sci-fi. You have all this magical elements involved. So you've got to find the right actors that will be able to carry you through this journey. And especially if they're doing a sequel, they're going to have to kind of play to the fans and play to the people who are new to the series to lay that foundation or lay the groundwork so you understand what's happening here. And I think we're in good hands with this, but I agree with you. These images, are they don't make you excited at all. And the color and font and, that they used on the Entertainment Weekly cover does not get you excited yeah. at all, you know? Uh, Matt, did you say whether or not you bought or sold uh, this idea that it's going to be a sequel? 
Oh, uh, no, I didn't. But, um, you know, considering I know nothing really of the property, I'll buy it. You know, that's sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Because otherwise you got to do you got to make a movie off of 5000 pages or you selectively pick one book. But you're still talking about, you know, 1500 pages to whittle down to one movie. So mm -hmm. why not just go, OK, that's going to be our inspiration to do another story. And you can just leave behind. So you're not offending the hardcore fans and you're taking the characters that they love and then just putting them in a new situation. So I'll buy that. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's next? Lionsgate has unveiled the first character posters from the upcoming Power Rangers movie, giving us a closer look at the new ensemble. Power Rangers follows five ordinary high school kids who must become something extraordinary when they learn that their small town of Angel Grove and the world is on the verge of being obliterated by an alien threat. The new posters give us the main lineup of Rangers featuring Ludie Lin as the Black Ranger, Zach Naomi Scott as the Pink Ranger, or as the, yeah, Pink Ranger, Kimberly... As Pink Ranger Kimberly, RJ Siler as the Blue Ranger Billy, Becky G as the Yellow Ranger Trini, Trini, and Dacre Montgomery as the Red Ranger Jason. Along with the new posters, EW also revealed an exclusive image of Elizabeth Banks' Rita Repulsa taking on Becky G's Trini. Power Rangers also features Brian Cranston as alien recruiter Zordon and will come to theaters on March 24th, 2017. John, do you buy or sell the new posters for Power Rangers? Uh, this is breaking news. I'll be the Brown Ranger John Roca in this thing so, <laughs> as a Latino. No, I... I Here's what I talk. I am not familiar with the Power Ranger. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I'm only cursory. I missed this growing up because it just, it was like I think the generation yeah. after me was into this and uh, into this. So I, I have to say, but, that but, but not... isn't the generation after you like the Civil War? That's like right. That? That's right. I apologize. <laughs> you're right. Well, in this iteration, okay. yeah, you're right. Uh, no, I, and so I, it wasn't my thing. So I don't. I'm not familiar with the concept. That being said, I'm going to disagree with my very good friend Mark Riley and say that I liked these very very much uh the, <laughs> these are so good i enjoy them i enjoy the colors i enjoy the <laughs> i see him ready to go with me. go at me no i like the lightning bolts of it's great imagery and the color of the rangers and the colors are not overt they're real subtle that they're in there but you see them you notice them obviously but the faces are what take prominence and the lightning bolt across mm -hmm. them i thought that's great so i enjoyed these pictures very much i buy them I buy them as well. I'm also like you. I didn't grow up with, with the Power Rangers, so I, I don't know that much about them. As maybe teaser character posters, they, they work. I hope later on when it gets closer to the movie, they, they release stuff with the suit. Because you look at these, you're not sure. If you're someone like me who, who wasn't too familiar with Power Rangers, you don't know that 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 it's this and speaking of when you're talking about like you being the brown ranger you see, <laughs> you see have you noticed like the asian guy is the bl the black ranger right. and the black guy is the blue ranger it actually reminds me of um <laughs> Have you seen the Keen Pills? Yes. Oh yeah. my God! Where he's the Green Ranger, like, <laughs> and, or whatever. No, like, Black Falcon. He's like, yeah, oh, yeah that's what yeah. they keep calling him, Black Falcon, but he's actually the Green Falcon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that's what it reminds me of. Um, this. Uh, um, that's brilliant. You know what? Even though I didn't grow up with Power Rangers. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I like yeah. the Iron Man inspired suits that they have. It's the only direction I think they could go. Another reason I'm a little hopeful for this is for the writers. Mm -hmm. um, Ashley Miller and Zach Stentz, who I've been following since uh, Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles. They did a bunch oh, of wow. fringe episodes. They also did the first Thor, and they wrote um, X-Men First Class. They're mm. writing this. Oh, okay. there, there's additional writers. I think Max Landis is on there. There's a, So I don't know how much of their script is still left, but hopefully a, a good part of it. So that's, that's what keeps me excited about this film. Matt? Yeah. Uh, the first thought I had when I saw it, which is this is going to date me as well, and Sinead, this is... Something there's a reference apparently ten years, fifteen years before you were born, <laughs> which I saw and I just thought of Starman from the old oh, pro yeah. wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Yes, that's a that, that was my of. character. I always used cool. Starman. Of course, so he did the, the flippy thing. Yeah, 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 it was the most fun. Yeah. He was he was one of the better. Like I had him and another guy that one with a longer <laughs> mullety and he would kind of like chew their head. Or something. I don't even yeah. remember at this point, <laughs> but it's like that mixed with Ziggy Stardust. And I didn't grow oh. up with this franchise. Every time I'd see it, I'd be like, well, this isn't made for me. You know what I mean? My brain has evolved past being able to soak this in and find the entertainment value just because I just don't understand what is going on. It's the first time I felt old. I was watching that and be like, this is entertainment? Like, do kids tune in for this? Okay, I, it's lost on me. I hope, because when you add someone like Cranston, yeah. even if the film's bad, I know he's going to be amazing. So already right there, they've got a leg up. 
versus you know had they made another casting choice like even even in like trumbo trumbo's okay cranston is great yeah. and what i hear from the newest release the film's okay he is great so no matter what we're going to get great performances i also think he elevates the cast around him so all these young kids will do well to play off of him and learn from him mm -hmm. so i think they could ultimately succeed i just the initial images don't really do they don't capture my imagination like i'm sure they do others mm -hmm. uh, Sinead, uh were you a fan of the power rangers and mm -hmm. what do you think about these posters uh yeah power rangers is my jam growing up and we used to play Power Rangers like every single day. Um, I love these posters because if you are a fan of Power Rangers, you had a favorite Power Ranger and like that Power Ranger was like your alter ego and who you aspired to be. And I, these posters make me very nostalgic because they are introducing us to like your each character in the sense where like you're going to have one of them is going to relate to you where you're going to be able to relate to one of them and that's like everyone is always like oh yeah when we used to play i was always the yellow ranger or the pink ranger or you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i like these posters a lot because they kind of have like a 90s feel to them mm -hmm. um and the colors and the design of them they're simple and i feel like i i know just a little bit more about each of them, just a little bit without, you know, giving away their personality traits, but I feel like I'm getting to know them. So I don't mind that they, they're they very simple and it's just their faces. And I mean, I'm sure they'll get a lot of hate for just being like a lightning bolt mm -hmm. and kind of cheesy or Photoshop, but I think they're cool. Yeah. Which, which ranger did you play, Sinead? Because you're multi-ethnic. I know, like, it was always so hard for me. Were you like, were you like <laughs> Rainbow Ranger? It was always like so hard for me. On you? Um, I always played, I think I was always the Yellow Ranger. Okay. Um, because I, as a child, I was always confused as to what I was. Like, I didn't understand. <laughs> I never got it. And everyone would, like, all my friends around me would always, like, give me the race that they thought I was. So like my race changed every single week. Um, but my sister growing up, she was like, I'm the pink ranger. So I was always the yellow ranger. Nice. Yeah. All right, what's next? 20th Century Fox has released the first Rules Don't Apply trailer for their unconventional love story that takes place in 1958, revolving around the relationship between Lily Collins' religiously devout actress and Alden Alden Ehrenreich's equally conservative driver, both of whom are in the employ of eccentric visionary Howard Hughes, played by Warren Beatty. The movie marks Beatty's return to the director's chair since 1998's Bullworth, and the film opens on November 23rd and also stars Alec Baldwin, Annette Bening, Haley Bennett, Candace Bergen, Matthew Broderick, Dabney Coleman, Steve Coogan, Thaisa Farmiga, Ed Harris, Megan Hilty, Oliver, Oliver Platt, and Martin Sheen. Matt, do you buy or sell the first trailer for Warren Beatty's Rules Don't Apply? Um, I, I guess I'm buying for now. Um, it's, it's got like a madcap rom-com kind of element to it, which I enjoy. And it looks, especially set in that time. I'm like, I, you know, I could easily get on board with this. I just don't understand so far, at least through that trailer, the character that they're trying to purvey with, uh, uh, Howard Hughes, because after seeing the aviator, <laughs> it's kind of hard to now see him as like this zany kind of guy that gets into shenanigans. And you're like, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think of him as like a crazy guy, like what, Who you know, he's in jars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he wears shoe boxes on his uh, feet and stuff like that. It's just like, I, I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to give Beatty enough credit to where you've done amazing work in the past. Uh, so please do well with this. I just, it's the tonality of the trailer at times loses me, but overall, I think I would see it. It seems enjoyable and something I, I would definitely, you know, see in the theater. Roka. Oh God, I couldn't sell this more. I want to take, <laughs> I want to take all your money and sell it like a thousand percent. It's so out of place. We're way past a movie like this as a society and a film going public. I think it just doesn't work. I think Woody Allen would have done a better version of this type of movie, which cafe society kind of feels like it is. And, and you know, personal stuff aside with him, but like for me, it's just, a matter of this feels like Warren Beatty hasn't done a good film since Bugsy and that's the mid 90s and so to me that's the kind of situation we're dealing with here and this feels really out of place and I think he's what 20 years too old to play Howard Hughes at this yeah. point and so it's not believable that he's Howard Hughes and by what unconventional love story are you trying to sell me an old man being an, a, interested in a young woman with a young man who wants to be with her too What's unconventional about that? I've seen that a million times in all kinds of movies. So to me, it, do, it didn't really sell me on what I wanted to have, that kind of feeling of old Hollywood and really be into it and be quirky and interesting and have a new take on it. But this seemed like kind of a B-movie version of films we've seen before that capture old Hollywood in certain times. And so it didn't, I didn't find it that interesting. Although I did like seeing Alden uh, play, playing that role. It's nice to see him play something other than what he played in Hail Caesar. So I was excited for him, but I absolutely sell this. 
this movie. Okay. Unlike grumpy old man over here, <laughs> I am going to buy this trailer. I liked it. I, there's a charm to it. And, yeah. and what you say about like the rom-com feel, I actually liked it because... You know, when I heard this movie was coming out, I was like, oh, Warren Bain's doing a Howard Hughes movie? We saw Scorsese. Yeah. How is he going to mm, top Scorsese right. and, and DiCaprio? That's a fantastic movie. And then seeing how this is different and how it's actually not even really focused on Howard Hughes. It, it's mainly about the relationship between uh, Alden Ehrenreich and um, Lily, Lily Collins. Collins. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing that. And, you know, I actually liked Bullworth. You didn't like Bullworth? No, no, I thought it was okay. I didn't okay. know. I wasn't 100% down with it. Wow, so. yeah. I think you guys are much higher on that movie than I am. <laughs> I can't even believe that's a discussion between the three of us. We all seem like smart, intelligent individuals. <laughs> and you are buying 100%. And you're tentatively buying. And I'm like, yeah. what, what is going on? This is bizarre. Yeah, and I, I like Warren Beatty. I don't want, I want to say anything negative. I like Warren Beatty. Warren, what you said, Matt, about Warren Beatty, absolutely. He's done great work yeah. in the past. No problem with Warren Beatty at all as a filmmaker or as an actor. Okay. But this just didn't hit the right notes for me all right all right guys now on to our weekly friday segment called box office predictions brought to you by our friends at amc theaters this is the segment every week that we talk about and try and predict what the top five movies of this weekend are gonna be uh roca why don't you go first oh, okay yeah all right so my number one i think will be ghostbusters it's getting really good reviews it's, yeah some people aren't 100 percent down with it but a lot of people are so i think it's definitely gonna be number one i think secret life of pets is gonna be there at number two i think legend of tarzan is, still has some legs which is so insane to me i think that'll be three finding dory will tumble down a little bit to four and i think mike and Dave need wedding dates is having this insane groundswell of people who are liking that movie. So I think it'll be number five in my opinion. Matt? Uh, I would say almost the same thing as John. I would just flip-flop Finding Dory and Tarzan. I think okay. even though it's two basically kid-centric or family-centric movies, I think they're going to be neck and neck for two and three just because Tarzan, I don't think it has legs. Yeah. So it's just going to slowly peter out. It could even drop to fifth and then uh, the wedding dates jumps to fourth, although I think that's a stretch. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I think it's close to that. Tarzan's made a hundred million. That's insane. Uh, well, it cost a hundred and eighty. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't even know where all that money went. Yeah, so. I thought it would sink, and it's yeah. like it's got legs. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm actually gonna be different than you guys because I think that Secret Life of Pets is gonna be number one Ooh. this weekend. I think it's gonna it's one of those movies that's gonna have legs. Animated movies always do, and it made you know over a hundred million. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a decent movie I, you know i wouldn't like tell people to run out and see it but apparently people love it i think ghostbusters is getting you know i think mixed to positive reviews i still haven't seen it yet mm -hmm. i will check it out i just don't know if if it's gonna beat secret life of pets then i have after ghostbusters finding dory uh legend of tarzan and then mike and dave need wedding dates yeah all right all right, guys, now on to a mailbag. This is the portion of the show where we answer your viewer submitted questions. How do you do that? You can send them into collidervideo at gmail.com. We answer them here on Movie Talk. We answer them on our weekend mailbags. Today, we only got one, and then we'll get into live Twitter questions. Sinead, what do we got? Adam Sandoval writes, all right, time to open up a can of worms. You guys have said that you have disliked Star Wars episodes one through three and said that you hate the Transformers franchise with pure rage, minus the original. So my question would be, what would you change to fix it in terms of story, character, and flow of the films? Please be specific. Hashtag stop the shit rat face. Um, <laughs> as, as much as crap as myself and I think everyone else in general gives the prequels, there are a lot of redeeming qualities mm -hmm. about the prequels. You have Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. The general storyline is actually good about Anakin turning to the dark side. There's there's some entertaining action sequences. There's, there's good things about it. Transformers, on the other hand, <laughs> the, like when he's talking about fixing that, it's not like, ooh, you, you know, these, I, I feel like the prequels, if you tweak certain things, uh, you know, here and there, I'll, I'll talk about that a little later. You could make them into good movies. Transform, you gotta wipe that whole thing out. You gotta like ob obliterate that thing and start from scratch, you know? Because first of all, it focuses on a bunch of humans, which I don't care about. I wanna see the Transformers. Like, I wanna see the actual characters. I don't know anything about the characters other than the way they look in those movies. Optimus Prime is one of my favorite characters growing up. I don't know what the hell that is in the movies that's not Optimus Prime he's, he wants to like kill people and chop people's heads off I don't know he's like a bloodthirsty Optimus Prime I don't know so I would start with characters with, with, with Transformers and then make a story that's at least s 
simple enough to follow. I mean, they try to like make all these little sidetrack storylines. I don't care. Um, as far as Star Wars, you know, it's easy. Take out Jar Jar Binks, take out Metachlorians, take out the Force births, you know, uh, replace Jake Lloyd, replace Hayden Christensen. I would keep Natalie Portman. I would just try and get a better performance out of her. Roka as a huge Star Wars <laughs> fan. How are we? How would you fix the prequels? And how would you fix Transformers? I think you remove that Trade Federation crap that was in there. I look. I'm going to be straight honest right now because I don't have any filters today. Like it's, I re remove all that stuff because it was boring. It was exhausting. When you're watching that film, you're like, I don't. I don't know. George Lucas is going like nine levels deep, and for an audience that wants to watch Star Wars, they don't want to go nine levels deep on a Trade Federation storyline, no. all this kind of crap. Minichlorians, absolutely. Yeah. It was one of the most controversial, dumbest things ever. Uh, Jake Lloyd, yeah, I feel bad for the guy how the kid ended out and you're right probably replacing him would have been good but these are all it's all lucas so to me it's like you got to go lucas i loved him for the original trilogy obviously but listen you got to call if you give a guy credit you also got to take away credit away or give him blame sometimes like a quarterback and that's the thing he's a quarterback of those of those prequels he directed them he wrote them oh, the script is another place you could start just get an, other people in there to write the scripts write better dialogue write more cohesive uh tighter scripts that are more interesting the cg is fantastic i enjoyed that last battle uh in most of that's fucking i mean that's great i'm sorry <laughs> that's fantastic and uh and 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 i loved obviously you and mcgregor as obi-wan you and what you and did deserved a better trilogy. It's just it just really did, and yeah. so there should have been. A, everyone should have stepped up their A game. I like the fact that they quietly and, and well, not quietly, I guess, but they gently removed George from the property, bought him out, and they've taken over. We've seen they're slowly building more with the property, putting in other writers, putting in other directors, putting in people who understand how to write for actors and who know how to direct actors, and that's what we're seeing now. So that's what I would do. I would go back and take all that stuff out, make a more cohesive story, more understandable story, definitely get rid of Jar Jar. You could still have the Gungans, just get rid of Jar Jar, you know, and play around with that. Um, but Dennis, as far as Transformers, I gotta disagree with you completely. Oh my god! I only hate the second movie. Oh, oh my god! One, three, four, and four. Jesus! They're just ridiculously stupid. And you don't like stupid. Pacific Rim? Oh, Rim, oh my, is, Rim is just ridiculous. Oh my one, god! I, we one, should have three, a debate. We should have a video <laughs> yes. one day. I can tell you all the things that Pacific Rim did right that Transformers did that's wrong. A short, that's a I short video. That's a long video. That's a short video. video. Oh no! Well, I okay. Well, let me get this out before yeah. you all jump on top of me. But like, go right ahead. I absolutely enjoy the the transformer changes, the transformers uh, uh, sounds, the characters, the they way do they, they change. They don't change. No, when they're transforming, it's awesome. The, last the sounds of cubes Ooh. were just like they just. The but cubes it, came the cubes out. Are the cubes great. It took three are movies. Great. It took three movies for Bay to go. You know what? I shouldn't zoom in on his elbow. I need to pull out so the audience can understand what in the world is going on as he makes the change. Because all this fighting is happening, and you're like, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea. But it's so much fun to watch. No, though. it's not. I enjoy it. It's, no, it's not. You know, it's probably because I either get inebriated or high before I go see these Transformers movies, and I enjoy the hell Listen. out of them when I go see them. I saw the last one. I wanted it to keep going, and it was oh almost four God. hours long. You're making, oh, that God. movie made my head when, hurt. When they it's started so bad. You're making my head hurt right how, now. How do you make robotic <laughs> dinosaurs boring? That was Michael, awesome. Michael Bay. It's five hours into the movie, and they're riding and dinosaurs, they, and, and they I was show like, up. Yeah, I was like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Really? You had the sword and everything? Don't care. The Dinobots? Don't care. It was really? so boring. So oh, wow. boring. We, we, Listen, the stories are terrible. Absolutely. So what exactly are you defending? I enjoy Shiny the metal visual objects? image of it. Yeah, the visual image just keeps me watching and I enjoy it. For whatever reason, I just enjoy those films for that. I really what? love the visual image. Dangle and, keys and in and front I, of your face I and save yourself for a dollar. Just Matt, saying. Those, let's go outside. Right I'm just now. saying. Right. You would save yourself the hours and the money because that's the, the equivalent, the intellectual equivalent. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> uh, We've all got that. We've all, all got right. those. You know, yeah. you know if you, you listen to us on the top ten show, you know we've Bud all got those. That Bud Light scene, too, like cracking over. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Bud Light. I mean, this is, this, we, we'll do another video sure. on, on, yeah. on this topic. Matt. What, what are we fixing in the prequel? What are we fixing in Transformers? It's like a part of my soul was just shot. Yeah. It's just dying. What I like is that you're not dramatic about things. No, not no, at no, all. Hey. Not at all. Am I amping it up because there are cameras? Never. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Uh, what would it, what I change about like the prequels? Everything you said, I, I would do what they've done now is get rid of all the green screens. That's why we got yeah, so many wooden performances. Absolutely. Is like I'm playing in a room of green. I don't understand like oh look, make your you know look this direction. Here's where your eye line is and all that stuff and like 
you get all these brutal wooden performances like from from Hayden and Natalie like the I love you no my love for you exceeds your <laughs> love for me <laughs> oh my and it's just like I put a gun in my mouth right yeah. now somebody this is See? brutal so you don't have that in the Transformers movies <laughs> no no you have yeah like you, you said you, you have the Romeo and Juliet law that's uh, right uh, statutory rape what? Yeah, that, oh, what did you not watch the last film where they explain was how statutory wasn't after his daughter no the, the, yeah the, the, the older the, kid the, his oh, daughter they had a whole scene yeah. about why statutory rape was okay I, yeah, was I can't believe you're I defending that of all movies I was drunk yeah go ahead like yeah. in that in that movie when like they, they, that kid shows up out of nowhere and he's got that off-roading car yeah. and they all <laughs> jump into it and he starts going over those hills and he perfectly launches off a hill and his front tire yeah. just nicks a dude and he just perfect knockout knocks him punch out. and he doesn't goes kill down. knocks him down no oh. and then they take oh. off and they're following him and they go in that deserted uh, warehouse district and they go up and the guy's like alright brace yourselves <laughs> And he flies out the fourth window and onto a car ramp. Oh, oh wait. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. Is this a stunt part oh, for cars that I didn't know oh, about? Oh, you're looking for believability in a film about robots from another planet. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's kind the jump. Of. That's the jump. Kind too far? of. Really? I, I want something more They're than robots from they changed planet. in front of my yeah, eyes. This yeah, is you're beautiful. Gonna, you're going to argue physics and then with robots from another planet? It's not even physics. Well, if you I'm watch saying, it, you're like, you there's nothing physics. Mirror makes an attempt to make them look like they're transforming, right? Like, what? what? Body. They're there's just like, 200 the cute, yeah, they're like moves. nanobots. Yeah, they yeah, recongeal, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like, yeah. I There's don't care. 267 different moves when they're changing. Watch the behind the scenes. That's, it's fascinating. Uh, uh, it's you guys not. are making me sweat. It's not. <laughs> you gotta sweat. Uh, okay. All right, anyway. Oh, all right. <laughs> That, well, that, what would you fix though about the Transformers? Transform what Dennis said. Oh, get rid of all Dennis, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what you said scratch. before. Why? Why are we focusing on the people? The most boring aspects of this entire story. Yeah, I went to humanize it for us. I don't care. Yeah, people, I don't care. The people were the TV series. The people you were. No, no, no. You saw them, and every time you'd see them, because I watched them as a kid, be like, yeah. get off the screen, like get off the screen. Spike, I don't want to see you. Okay. Spike, and then later, yeah. it was like his, his I don't care. Yeah. kid, his you know? kid. Yeah, 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 his kid gets in the suit. And I want to yeah, be like, Dad, yeah. I can do this, guys, and be like, someone please kill him. Yeah. yeah. And let's just move on to the robots and fighting each other because that is awesome. Well, just know that I voice a character in Transformers robots in this guy, so I kind of have to. Is it a person? Or is it a robot? It's a robot. Spring yes, so then you want That's more right. robots. That's my voice yeah. in Robots in yes. Disguise. So okay. I kind of have to defend We're fighting for you. All right. All right. <laughs> That's it for this mailbag. <laughs> Let's move on to live Twitter questions. We'll take a few Good here. Good job, Adam Sandoval, <laughs> sending yeah. in that question. Yeah, yeah can, can of worms <laughs> have been, has been open. Yeah, rat face. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, send in your live Twitter questions at Collider Video. Sinead will pick out a few. What do we got? All right. Um, at Grayman777 says, do you guys think that Disney will hit $5 billion, $5 billion hits this year? We have Zootopia, Civil War, Dory, Moana, Rogue One. Uh, I think so with Rogue One. I mean, the only, the only they got Doctor Strange too coming out mm -hmm, uh, at the end mm -hmm. of this year. Rogue One, the only thing is that it's coming out in December, so are they going to count the January, February totals, you know, with, with this year? Yeah. I Pro think, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, more than likely not, but I don't think they'll really need it. I mean, they've already had an insanely successful year so far, so those two to three weeks that they'll get, hopefully, I don't think they'll get Force Awakens numbers. Like, they'll still do well, but I don't know if I'm going to see this, you know, three or four times in the theater in three mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless it's phenomenal, and then yeah, then I will totally see it three or four times. Yeah, I saw Force Awakens four times in two weeks. Like I just yeah. I had to go back because it just called all my friends. To so yeah, there might be man, you're right. But I think Moana is the one that's really going to blow up, like a surprise hit. Yeah, yeah, I really think so. The trailers have been fantastic, and you have The Rock, and it's a it's a story. It's going back to that story of a child connecting with with an ancient mythology, and I think that people love that in Disney films or exploring that in Disney films, and I think this is going to be fantastic. And I think that's the one that's really going to set them uh, up really well. To heading into uh, uh, Rogue One. Okay. All right, what's next? Um, Kylo Ben asks if we're going to be doing movie talk during Comic-Con. He says, hashtag, I'm the Green Ranger. Yes, we are. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do it live mm -hmm. because of the internet situation over there. Also, our equipment. We don't have the whole setup that we have going on here. So we will have movie talk, I think, on Thursday. We'll probably shoot it early in the morning, but then the guys have to edit it and put it together. And then on Friday, a little bit later, we will be doing movie talk. We'll be doing mailbags. They just won't come out at the exact same times that we normally have them. But trust us, we're going to have a lot of coverage there. We'll have interviews. We'll also have just a lot of news segments. Like if, if news breaks, we're going to sit down and, and talk about it. The crew is going to be kind of scattered around Comic-Con, so it's not going to be the whole crew there. But, you know, 
Roca, if he's around, he, he'll pop in there. Sure. Um, there's going to be a lot of people coming in and out. So just check for our channel, and, and we'll definitely have some stuff there. All right, what's next? <clears throat> Junior Roberts tweets, if the prequels came out first, do you think Star Wars would be the phenomenon oh, it is oh today? That's a great God. question. Great yeah. question. That's a great question. Uh, How have I never thought of that? Yeah. That's a great question. Roca. Oh, Jesus. Uh, no. No. That's my okay. honest truth. I think I don't think they would have gotten to a third one. No. I think the I think people would have been like, what is this? And they would have tore apart Hayden Christensen in the second film. Uh, and I don't think it would, there was no way it would be a third. Like It would be like Matrix Revolutions. It might have been an interesting beginning, and then it would have just faltered all the way down, and not enough would have saved it, and it would be something we talk about as a wasted opportunity, in my opinion. I think the, the question is, does he mean Star Wars? Let's say, take the prequels mm -hmm. and put them... Uh, when Star Wars came out? Yeah. Or, okay. If the first thing we ever saw of Star Wars. Then I would say yes. Because even though mm. while we don't like the prequels, there's a generation of younger people who, yeah. who still get that Star Wars feel. I don't exactly agree with that, but they still get at least some of it. And there is a like a enthusiasm and a fan fervor that they get for it. Mm -hmm. So I think it would, it just... You know, I guess for us, uh, it wouldn't feel the same. What about you? I just think that because Star Wars was a cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. you know, you, I've seen footage and, and stills and whatnot uh, from that era where there are literally lines wrapped around blocks just to get in. People talking about seeing it numerous times, whereas the first one, uh, the first prequel, if you put that out, uh, I think that appeals mostly to kids and it doesn't have the draw with adults. So then they would skew the series to being basically towards kids for its duration. So I think it's a, ultimately a different arc overall and we don't have the current property we have. So I don't think it's near, I mean, the phenomena. You wouldn't be wearing that shirt unless you no. grew up right at the time when it got released. Yeah. It'd be like the equivalent of the Power Rangers. Like you need to be a 90s kid to be super excited right now. Whereas the people that grew up without it are just like, okay, I hope it's good. I have no idea. Plus I'd love to know the percentages of people that, that saw the prequels and liked them after they'd seen the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. Like it'd be interesting to see because if you have the original trilogy as a base, you can somewhat enjoy the prequel, sure. I do, yeah. All right, let's do one more. Abigail asks, if we could add one thing to any movie theater concession stand, what food or drink would you pick? Man, that's tough. I would go with donuts and beer. <laughs> Oh, well, beer. Oh, well, they've Beer's got beer happening. already. Beer's yeah, happening. but not. Beer. But at the concession stands, because like at the AMC, you have to go like to the bar. The which separate is bar. Weird. Yeah. Oh yeah. So at ArcLight too, you have to go. Yeah. To the bar. And donuts yeah. and beer is not a very tasty combination. Mm -hmm. But if I was in the movie, I think I would do it. I just want higher quality food. Uh, you know, like, like Panda Express. No, <laughs> no. I don't need gut bombs. Um, I love Panda Express. Not in a the theater, right? Yeah. They're not a sponsor, are they? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just want better food uh, in general. Just like those little crappy hot dogs that some mm. places have. Just, I guess, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, for me, like, at, at some movie theaters, they don't have, like, unsweetened iced tea. Like, mm. yeah. they have mm -hmm. all the sweetened ones. I want unsweetened iced tea. Yeah, I would agree with that. Iced tea is good. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, is it? What do you want me to say? Okay. I mean, I, I don't know you more to add to this. Pretty passionate <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, think, I think healthier <laughs> options would be great. Ice tea right? is good. Ice tea is good. You're, pretty, appealing, to the, you're appealing to the you're appealing to the woman that said donuts and beer. You're like healthier <laughs> options. Yeah. Healthier <laughs> options. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, it would be nice to have that you could go and have these snacks, typical snacks. Here's what I say on the West Coast: Twizzlers. Put Twizzlers. Oh no, red no vines. Red vines. Oh, oh red come vines. on, vines suck. Once oh, Twizzlers are the jam. Yeah. Here. Once I tried red vines, never went back. Oh, why never would you? Back. Twi I would never Twizzlers go back to are Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Yeah, Twizzlers, Twizzlers are, are, the are plastic. The they're plastic. They're, yeah, they're, they're like, like super hard, and you have to chew yeah. them. Yeah, that's right. Like a, like a man never, should. Never, like a man should. It's not even licorice. It's just like wax. There's this wax. Yeah, it doesn't that they put taste on. like licorice it, either. Like red yeah. vines actually taste like licorice. Oh, like yeah. authentic yeah. licorice. No. Red vines is like this airy, weak stuff that you. Oh, uh, it's delicious. It's, it's delicious. It tastes like an actual candy where like Twizzlers is just like they it's melted candy. candle wax yeah, on top of something. Yeah, you're not and East then Coast. Twizzlers Twizzl Coast Twizzlers. Yeah. Twizzlers jam. taste like they buried medicine in it and they want to give it to kids to yeah. get kids to take like aspirin. This is the the equivalent of that. Trust me, I grew up on the East Coast. I know. I didn't know, even know red vines existed until I moved here. You like once I tried vines. those, it's not even close. Really? It's God, not even close. Terrible. So terrible. moral of the story, donuts, beer, and Panda Express. And uh, iced tea. And iced tea. <laughs> iced tea. And almond M&Ms. 
Okay. What about you? Oh, uh, I would just say coffee that's not sludge. You never know what you're gonna get, and sometimes you're like, I, "We made it this morning," and be like, "It's ten o'clock at night." So I'm that's a hard pass mm -hmm, for me. Mm -hmm. And I would say pretzel bites at every theater, not just AMC. Okay. Those pretzel bites with the cheese, yes. those are the bomb. Okay. So we make them at every theater. <laughs> they should okay. be a staple. Churros. What about churros? No, not churros. Don't oh, be racist. Yeah. Churros. Don't be racist, Dennis. Churros would be delicious. Churros tacos. Who doesn't burritos. love churros? I love tacos. I love burritos. Tamales. Why is it racist? Because I, I like churros. I'm Latino. I asked Dennis I mean, if he would add like Panda churros. Express. That could have been racist, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't. Been. I just yeah. love Panda Express. And I love churros. I love, what are you going to attack me with, Subway? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to get with? Eat fresh. Exactly. I don't know. Eat fresh. I don't know. We just like destroyed it. What did that say about your ethnicity that you chose donuts and beer? And now I'm lost completely. She doesn't even know what ethnicity she is. Yeah, what that. Power Ranger are you? That's what I want to know. <laughs> we, we have lost like every sponsor, that, every potential sponsor after this show. I love McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now let's 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 end this show before things get even more crazy. All right. Uh, I'd like to thank the people joining me on the panel today. John Roca, grumpy old man. Where can people find you? <laughs> hey guys, you can always find me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, you can see all the shows I'm hosting, co-hosting, like our top ten show and all the shows that I am a guest on. Yeah, please, every Wednesday at two p.m., Matt and I do the top ten show. Uh, we just did uh, top ten unnecessary remakes. Yeah, came out uh, this week. That's right. That's right. So uh, please always follow me there, and uh, you can see all the shows I'm a guest on like this. Thanks yeah. for having me on again. And Matt. Uh, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. It was a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. Um, I am my Schmodown match comes out at 2 p.m. today, so please tune into that. It's me versus Elliot Dewberry, and I am going to whoop his ass. All right, I'll let you know that right now. Uh, and yeah, like John said, uh, please check out the top 10, unless you hated me on the show today. <laughs> and please just keep watching new Movie Talk and disregard that announcement before. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun new show. We're so excited to be here at uh, Collider. It's been a lot Definitely. of fun. You guys have been great uh, in, in commenting and whatnot. Absolutely. And uh, please just check us out there, Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Yeah. And uh, Rainbow <laughs> Ranger, Sinead, uh, where can people find you? Hey guys, um, today was super fun. Um, so I'm really happy to have hosted with you guys. This is a good one. <laughs> this is a good Friday. But I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that's Sinead.com. On Mondays here hosting Collider TV Talk. On Fridays hosting Movie Talk. And over the weekend on Collider Mailbag. And I forgot to go to the Wendy cam. So Wendy, Lee, uh, can you tell us what they said about uh, <laughs> Rogue One? No! no uh, what no, else? Oh my god, no! no that's so sad. <laughs> Rowan, I just want to say, Wonder I'm watching you guys fight from back here. Every single one of you are sweating. Yeah. There's like yes. a, a oh, no, sheen We got, we right. got excited about uh, Transformers All right, real quick, I'll just touch on the Rogue, One the Rogue One okay. not trailer. Um, so everybody in the chat's mad that there's no trailer released. For those watching Celebration via live stream, just the featurette. But for the most part, they still love it. Um, and a lot are liking the amount of practical effects seen in the featurette. Although some thought that it showed just a little bit too much uh, spoilers. This is... Coming from the chat, apparently somebody on the panel ruined, uh, spoiled something, so they cut the live feed at Celebration. Okay, uh, actually, what did people say about our Star Wars and Transformers talk? They're saying, Mommy and Daddy, please stop fighting. <laughs> 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 For the most part, they do That's agree awesome. with you guys, especially on the, uh, the Transformers side more so than anything else like just don't make it they more. agree with me and matt right yeah, yeah. Oh, not, 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 sorry not retro guy no no not billion dollar franchise that it is <laughs> yeah. I, I agree I okay because money always equals quality <laughs> come yeah. on now anyways uh wendy where can people find you you can find me at wendy lee zaney on twitter instagram and snapchat and you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Just a reminder, we got Collider Mailbags this weekend. Check out that show. We also have Movie Talk coming back on Monday. Uh, our meet and greet at Comic-Con. We got a lot of coverage coming next week. We will got, see you guys next week. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.